Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to perform a Z-test in R. Now a Z-test, which is a one sample test, uh, is uh, conducted in R. And we want to do something like a test to see if a sample differs from a population. So uh, in my example here, I'm going to assume that I'm working on the production line of a food in a food factory and uh, producing packages of food that weigh at least 1,000 grams. So on the label, it will say average contents at least 1,000 grams. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to randomly select, select uh, packages from the production line, weigh them on accurate material, and then run the Z-test to see if this sample differs significantly from the population. Uh, if it does, it might mean I might need to make some changes to the production line, uh, some machinery or equipment might be faulty. So my null hypothesis, uh, here at line 6 in a comment, my null hypothesis is that mu, which is the population mean, is greater than or equal to 1,000. So in other words, um, the uh, packages of food contain at least 1,000 grams. And we assume the null hypothesis isn't true unless we have sufficient evidence to prove otherwise. Our alternative hypothesis is the opposite of that, is that mu, the population mean, is less than 1,000. And if we prove this, we may then, then need to make changes to the production line in order to increase the weights. So we're testing to see if the packages of food uh, are significantly weighing less than 1,000 grams. My formula for this, for my Z statistic, is uh, there's four components to it. So we've got X bar first, which is going to be the sample mean. Mu is the population mean, and we can see above that that's 1,000. And we divide that by sigma, which is the population standard deviation, which in turn is divided by the square root of n, n being the number of records uh, in the data set that you are testing. So to see what we're doing, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some data. So I've got a data file here called 84 data file. It's a CSV file. This CSV file, along with all other uh, sample data files used in this series, plus R scripts, are available in my GitHub. You'll find a link to that in the information section uh, beneath this video on the YouTube page. So let's go ahead and read this data in. I'm going to store it in a vector called WGT data. So I'm going to run this and then print out the data so that we can see what it is that we are dealing with. So we can see that my small data file contains just uh, 14 records uh, of one variable called weight with a capital W. And we can see here that just four out of the 14 uh, packages of food in this sample weigh 1,000 grams or more. And there's quite a lot that weigh less than 1,000 grams. So I want to determine, using the Z-test, uh, is, is, is the mean weight of this sample significantly differing from the population mean? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, write code to recreate the formula that you see here on lines 10 and 11 and 9, 10 and 11 in the um, R Studio. So I'm going to create a variable called zstat and assign that um, the formula that I'm going to write out longhand now. So I'm going to start off with brackets. So we need to be very careful with precedence here. So I like to use a lot of brackets. Um, and the first thing we can see in the formula is that we, on line 9, is that we need to calculate the sample mean. So I'm going to use the mean function for that. And the sample mean is my WGT data set, a dollar sign, and we can see it pops up with just the one variable that's in the data set, weight. So that section is going to calculate the mean of the sample. Then we can see then in our formula that we need to subtract then the mu, the population mean, from that. So the population mean is 1,000. Be careful not to use any commas in, in data like this. So that's the top part of my formula done here, x bar minus mu, the population mean. Then I need to divide that by the, uh, de uh, the, the denominator, the standard deviation, which in turn is divided by the square root of n. So it's a little bit awkward. And remember, you need to do this all in one line. Uh, we can't have these calculations done over two lines in R. So the next thing I'm going to do is I need to calculate the standard deviation. Now, we don't know the population standard deviation in this instance, and when that happens, and you assume the data are normally distributed, we can use the sample standard deviation as a, as a suitable substitute. So that's what I'm going to calculate here. So SD is the function to calculate the uh, standard deviation. My WGT data again, a dollar sign, and my weight variable. So that's going to calculate my standard deviation. And then that, in turn, then, is divided by the square root of n, so I'm going to use the sqrt function, the square root function, and in order to determine the n, I'm going to use the n row function. n row determines the number of records or number of rows, n row, and again, WGT data. So how many, we know it's 14, but how many rows are there in WGT data? So a quick re revision here of my formula. You can see it's made up of four components. I'm going to calculate the mean, which corresponds to x bar. 
The population mean is 1000, which corresponds to mu. The standard deviation of the sample corresponds to the sigma, the population standard deviation. And then the square root of n rho wg theta is, gives me the square root of n. So let me run this to make sure there are no errors or mistakes in it. And I'm going to print out my z stat. See what the value is. And the value in the console we can see is minus 2.508974, or as we prefer to report it, minus 2.0509. So we round that to three decimal places. So now what do we do with this number? So I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use a function called the PT function. Now, if you haven't used the PT function before, uh, do check the uh, help tab on the um, um, help area in the um, our studio. And you can see that the Z-test is based on, this, on T distributions, and you'll find information in here on the PT function plus some others. So we can see the PT function here in the second line. So if you haven't used this function before, it's always useful to go and take a look at some of the samples and arguments and parameters that are used in these functions uh, in help the help section. So I'm going to use the PT function here, which is a distribution function, and this is going to, so there's two arguments to this. The first one is my Z statistic, so I've now calculated my Z statistic, and then the second argument is the degrees of freedom. I'm going to use the N minus 1 rule here. We know N is equal to uh, 14, so I'm going to put in 13 here. I could use the N row function again here as well. So finally, when I run this piece of code here, we can see we get a, a p-value. This is a p-value of 0 0.013. So if we run our test, our z-test, at an alpha value of 0 0.05, which is a, a suitable value to run it for, uh, we can see that this p-value is less than 0 0.05. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. So when we're rejecting a null hypothesis, we are rejecting this statement. Then that assumes then that the alternative hypothesis is true and so that this population mean is in fact less than 1000 grams. So in this particular instance here we have a problem. Uh, the quality control is showing that the packages of food are weighing significantly less than what we say they should and therefore we may need to make some adjustments to the production line in order to fix the problem. So try this out on some other data, um, maybe some larger samples, uh, and try this on your own data to see does it work. Uh, just be careful with the, the precedence in the formula that I'm highlighting now. Uh, when you want to use this, it's very easy to make mistakes by leaving brackets out. So there's a lot of brackets there, so do watch out for that. So that's how you conduct a Z-test in R. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.